If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know I'm building a new woodworking workbench fitted with a bench table saw and a router table. In this fifth video, I'll show you how to build this side folding table and what it can offer. This is the 3D model that's included in the plans, which can be purchased on my website. Here you can see I used only one hard plywood board to make the bench tops. In my case, I've altered the design a little, so I got hold of a board that's similar to MDF, but a little harder and with melamine on both sides, which I thought was perfect for this workbench. This is the frame, the most important part of the folding table. It will allow me to open and close the table in a fairly quick and convenient way, as well as making the table more robust. I'm going to run a few tests to show off what this folding table can offer. First off, I'll place this jig so that I can work with big work pieces when the table is folded. Once the clamps have been tightened, the pieces are firmly secured to the bench. This combination of aluminum T-Track profile and the right clamps is quite comfortable and versatile. These kinds of clamps never turn and can stay at the desired aperture, so you can swap work pieces very quickly. I can place the same jig on the bench top so that it will act as a stop when cutting pieces horizontally. It will also allow me to do other kinds of jobs which call for a stop on the work pieces, such as when using a plane or flattening work pieces. The combination of T-Track profiles placed vertically and horizontally is very useful when making screw joints such as these. It will also let me hold small wooden work pieces to make dovetail joints, for example. Now I'll open up the table to show off more of its functions. I've used some box glass clamps to firmly secure the table when it's closed. Once open, the table is fairly robust, but we should be careful not to apply too much pressure on the far end. This part of the table should be used as a support or to assemble furniture or cut long pieces with a table saw. The table is 123 centimeters long and 65 centimeters deep when open. I'm going to unlock the sliding carriage to make some cuts. I'll also set up its fence and the support that, along with this drawer, will allow me to use the carriage to cut large work pieces. I've left the sliding carriage and folding table at the same height but when removing the screws that lock the carriage, it goes up a few tenths of a millimeter, just enough to make it work better.
The first advantage of the folding table is, of course, the fact that it allows us to place longer work pieces to cut them in a more convenient way. Also, when I need to use the extendable part of the sliding carriage fence. I'll use the strip of a board to cut larger work pieces more accurately. I keep it in the back of the bench. Attaching it to the folding table is very easy with some tightening knobs. The sliding carriage is detachable, allowing me to cut pieces using the table saw fence without the need to remove the sliding carriage fence. I put a piece of self-adhesive Teflon on the bottom and base of the sliding carriage to make it slide more smoothly. As you can see here, closing the folding table is as easy as opening it up. Now I'll show you how to make this folding table. I'll start by cutting all the necessary parts to build the lower frame of the table. I make sure the two shorter pieces of the frame are the right length by checking whether they fit in the side gap of the workbench. Now I mark and drill all the necessary holes for the screws with a column drill. And now comes what's definitely the most important step. I'm going to work out the exact position of the hole for the bolt that will act as the axis of rotation for the folding table. I'll use a piece of plywood with the same width and thickness as that of the original piece to use as a jig. To start off, I found a small mistake in the original design. As you can see here, it's necessary to make the same curved cut in the back of the piece so the table can turn. After making this cut, I make sure the hole is the proper size and the jig is level, with the top and the front of the workbench. I'll use double-sided tape to temporarily stick this jig to the original piece to mark the positions of the holes. I also need to make the small rabbit so that the table can be opened and closed. It will let me lift the table a little to deactivate the stop. It's time to assemble the frame. I'll use this old jig that I made some time ago to build some drawers. First, I drill the holes for the screws with a bit. I apply some wood glue and insert all of the screws. To screw in the back part, I'll use a wood block with the exact measurements as a jig to make the process easier. Now I'll cut some bits out of a steel pipe. I'm going to make them 2 millimeters longer than the plywood board's thickness. After putting them in their emplacement, it's time to install the folding table frame in the workbench. First, I'll finish drilling a hole in the front and back frames of the workbench, because the middle pieces hadn't been drilled yet. I insert the washer and the bolt that will act as the axis of rotation, and finally place another washer and a locking nut.
the nut will push the steel pipe against the inner washer, allowing me to have a firm rotation axis. The next step is to cut and machine the three parts of the support stop. First, I pre-mark all the necessary holes and cuts. I've inserted a piece of a steel pipe to join both pieces and then sand them down with a disc sander so that they're exactly the same. Just like before, I make sure the interior part is the right length to avoid problems in the future. With the same jig from earlier and some screws, I finish putting the three parts of the stop together. I'll also use a steel pipe here to avoid damaging the board. This time it's the same length as the plywood. It's time to install this top on the folding table frame. I'll use countersunk bolts and self-locking nuts. I'm going to tighten the nuts well so that it stop one turn while I'm opening or closing the folding table. To finish this job, I'm going to machine and install the part that will let me lock the table support stop. I drill two holes and finish machining it with a coping saw. This way, I'll be able to adjust the table so that it's flush with the upper parts of the mobile workbench. I work out their position and drill two holes in the workbench to hold this piece. I'll use countersunk bolts and nuts. I'm going to install the box clasp clamps to fix or lock the folding table when it's closed and use it to support and machine work pieces. First, I screw one of the parts to the frame of the folding table and after working out its position, I screw the other part to the bottom of the workbench. I've had to use a can of varnish to lift the bench a little so that I can screw it on. Since I didn't have a lot of space, I wasn't able to record the video, but you can see the end result here. I realized I forgot to drill two more holes in the front of the frame to place some threaded inserts. This could be done before putting the frame together. I'll now have to do it this way. It's time to cut and machine the parts for the top of the folding table. First, I'll cut the birch plywood base. I'll use some board pieces as spacers in order to screw the space to the frame of the folding table. After cutting the other upper part of the table, I make the necessary grooves so that I can install the aluminum T-track profiles. I'll use the table saw and make the groove in several runs. finish the job with a router plane.
I'll use screws to join the two table parts together. Using a self-centering bit, I make holes so that I can screw the T-track profiles to the table. After this is done, I make sure the folding table is level and flush with the rest of the bench. Now I'm going to machine the plywood strip that will let me support and cut large workpieces with a sliding carriage. I need to make a few 40mm holes so that I can place it over the two metal pieces screwed to the box clasp clamps. I'll use the strip itself to mark the holes for the threaded inserts in the back of the bench. Finally, I'm going to make the piece that will act as a stop and will allow me to prop work pieces on the folding table when it's closed. I'll make it out of 9mm plywood and cut it at the same width as the sliding carriage. I make adjustment grooves in the router table. I'll also make four new tightening knobs, two for this stop and another two for the wood strip that will allow me to prop and cut large work pieces. That's all for today. In a few days I'll post a new video on how to make the folding outfit table for this workbench.